we're going to create a, a new button using what's called an image sprite in Adobe Muse. This is, I think this is a pretty cool little technique that I saw the other day. What we can do is we can create a little rectangle, draw it somewhere, put an image in there, and then make it so that if somebody hovers over it, we take a background image that we put in there and we literally just kind of slide it and you make it look different. Don't worry, you'll see as we go. Go ahead and make the rectangle by clicking the rectangle tool. Click and drag, and we're gonna make it, it doesn't really matter how big you make it, make it about 50 by 50, you can see that right there, roughly. That's gotta just fit your image essentially. Let me zoom into this using Command Space Bar, click and drag, just so you can see it. Now we're gonna fill it with an image that I created. And you'll be able to see the image pretty clearly in a second here. Come to Fill, you can either come to the Fill in the Control Panel or the Fill Panel on the right. Come down here, let's insert an image, choose background image. We're going to put it as a background. And you're going to see this newer image here called fbbg.psd. You'll see that it's a, it's a pretty small image. Those are pixel dimensions right there. What I did was in Photoshop, I created this file, and you could have created it in any program. The idea here is that we're going to create what's called an image sprite. It just means you've got a bunch of icons, a bunch. You've got two or more icons in a single image, and they've got a little space between them. We're going to treat this lighter one as the what you see on the button when you first open the page. And if somebody hovers over the button, it's going to slide the background and show this one. But it's going to be so fast, you're not going to be able to see it happen. So it looks like it's two different images. This can save a little bit of time sometimes as far as download. Click open. There we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, original size, that's great. Put it on the top center, if you will. So we're going to position it so it's top center. Now what we need to do is we need to kind of change the size of this a little bit. Go to the selection tool, and I'm just going to resize it a little bit. Come on, arrows, you can show up. Resize it a little bit just to, you know, kind of close a little bit of it up. There we go. And the bottom two, we're going to bring it up. Now this is the key. we got to make sure that the bottom, the height of this thing, is, is where we need it to be. And you'll see in a second if it's not. Come here and put zero for the stroke. We may have to make this a little shorter. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set the state. So come up here to rectangle, click on normal, and you're going to see all the four states that we have available. Click on rollover, and that's what we're going to change right now. Now that we have the state selected, we can go out and do just about anything we want. Click on, you know what, I'm going to do it over here. Click on fill, whoops, click on fill. And you're going to see that we have the background image still there. All we're going to do now is reposition it. So let's say let's put it at the bottom there. Now you can see that it's going to be it's going to be a little off here. So what we need to do is we need to move this up just a little bit. You're going to have to play with this a hair. Okay. Come back over here to rollover and click on normal and rollover. And if you get it right, if you get the box size right, now you probably want to like look at the size of the image you make in Photoshop and just make sure it all works, but you'll see what it's doing here. So normal, roll over. It's literally just shifting the image in the background. That's it. Pretty cool, huh? Now you can try different states if you want to, and then we can add a link to it. Let me zoom out. Go ahead and zoom out if you don't mind. And what I want you to do is we're going to drag it up right up next to the Twitter icon right up there. Now you can see that it's got a white background, so we need to get rid of that. So go to fill again. I can see mine over here. And set the color to none. There we go. And it looks like it's got a little edge on the, uh, the image itself. That's, that's okay. Go to normal. We got to make sure that all the states have zero fill for, or zero white fill for color. Let me get rid of that too. There we go. Go to rollover, mouse down, active, and there we go. Cool. I want to make sure it's lined up and maybe bring it a little bit closer. There we go. We can always use the align panel for this if we want to make it a little bit closer. Click on the Facebook icon and we're going to add a link now. Come up here to hyperlinks and let's type in www.facebook.com forward slash. You can put your own if you want. I'll just do mine. Ask Brian Wood. There we go. Once again, for the buttons, if we want the, Im or the uh, website itself rather to open in a different window or a different tab in the browser, click on hyperlinks and choose open the link in a new window or tab because it won't do that by default. And let's go test it out. File, save site, file, 
preview site and browser. There we go. You'll see the hover, Twitter, Facebook, beautiful. That white edge, I know it's killing me too. Then click. Man, it looks like I screwed up the URL. I can always fix that. I've got it right here. Let me just grab it. Facebook.com, bam. Go back to Muse. I'm just going to fix mine. You, How did I miss that? There we go. Facebook.com. Beautiful. Awesome. So there you go. That's creating a button that does a little cool little background rollover. It's similar to what happens when you place a Photoshop button, but you can do it yourself. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to edit the Photoshop button and show you how that works.